Hello artists and welcome back to Art at Home with Mrs. Kellogg. Well, it's January and it's winter, so I thought it would be fun to create penguins for our art lesson today. Meet me over at my workstation and I'm going to tell you more about the lesson and the materials you will need. As I said before, we're going to create penguins for our art lesson today. And I'm going to show you how to draw an adult emperor penguin and a baby emperor penguin. Now let me tell you the art supplies you will need for today's art lesson. The first thing you want to do is set up your workspace. So put down an art mat or newspaper. The next thing you'll need to do is get some paper. And the paper can be any size, but make sure that it's thick enough to apply watercolor to. We are going to be drawing today, so you're gonna need a pencil and an eraser. And I'm going to use an ultra thin black Sharpie marker, but if you don't have that, you could use a black colored pencil. And we're also going to use colored pencils for this project today. We're going to watercolor the background, so make sure you have your watercolor set your paintbrush, a cup that's filled with water, and a paper towel. Now for the background, we're also going to do something that's really fun. What I did in this background was I added some salt. So you can use salt in your background. So I sprinkled some salt and then I applied water and the watercolor paint to create a crystallized effect in my sky. Now, I want to warn you that's a little messy, so make sure that you ask your mom or dad first. Now, if you don't have salt to use, or you think it's going to be too messy, you can always use a white crayon or an oil pastel to create snowflakes in your background and then apply the watercolor. Now would be a great time to pause the video get your workspace set up, and gather all your art supplies, and meet me back here, and we'll start creating emperor penguins. Did you get your supplies? Great, then let's get started. So we're gonna start by drawing the adult emperor penguin first. And we are going to start with the element of art line. We're gonna look for the action of the body. So we are going to draw what's called a gesture line. So from the top of the head, notice how it curves up and over and then comes down into the tail. So if, if you don't draw the tail, it's like an upside down J. And think of it as like a little bit of a smile or a curve there. So what I'm gonna do is figure out where the top is. Okay, so that top of the penguin and then I'm gonna curve over. And most likely I'm going to change this line as I go, but this is the action I want. So I'm gonna sketch that in. Okay, now I've got the action of the adult emperor penguin now I'm going to draw shapes. I'm going to start with an oval for the head and then a triangle for the nose or the beak. Sketching and drawing lightly as I do this. Okay, so that's the top of the beak. Now I'm going to draw the bottom and it's not as long as the top. I notice I'm going to have a pretty skinny penguin here and I want it a little wider. So I'm going to draw this line back a little further. So that's going to help widen my penguin because I haven't put the front in. I'm going to draw the eye. The eye lines up with the beak. Okay, next step, I'm going to put the body in the front part of the body. So I'm going to really look at the space in between the head and the body. That's called negative space. So that's gonna really help me place that body 
So I'm going to draw a triangle. I'm always looking for shapes, whether it's outside the penguin or it's the penguin's body. And this is going to be an oval shape. So now I have my big shapes in. I'm going to start adding the detail of the black. I get rid of the lines I don't want. Constantly adjusting and changing lines and shapes. So I have to look at things, draw it, look at it, change it, and go back and forth. And again, that's the process of drawing. Okay, so now I have my big shapes in, and I'm ready to draw the feet, and the feet are backwards triangles. So what I like to do first is place a line where the front of the foot would go. So this is where I start sketching and experimenting to see um, what placement of the feet I like. Let's see, backwards triangle. Okay, once I get that done, and I'm happy with the placement, then it's time to add some detail. So I'm gonna go rainbow line, make the lines meet, and another rainbow line. Okay, now I wanna place the baby. So I think of this would be a good placement and about that tall. So what I like to do is get my big shapes in first. So this is going to be an oval, rectangle into another oval. So now I have to decide where I'm going to place the beak. If I want the bird looking this way, for example, I'd place it there, but I'm going to try to get the bird to look up. So I'm going to come from here. It's the top triangle for the bottom. And then line up the eye. Since the bird is looking up, you would see the underneath part of the neck. So I am going to draw that part in. And I'm going to take some of that curve out. Now I'm ready to put the wings in. Curve to a triangle and then back up. And I'm going to make this bird a little wider. <laughs> and the same thing, I'm going to have that tail, little triangle tail. And the wings line up. So I'm going to have this one kind of coming out like so. Again, same thing for the feet. I'm going to place one here, one here. And now I'm going to put where the black uh, shapes would go in the baby penguin. And I want to put ground or the ice. I'm going to add a little triangle there. First I'm going to start by tracing my big shapes with my ultra fine black sharpie marker or my black colored pencil. Then the next step is I'm going to use my black colored pencil and my purple colored pencil to shade in the dark areas of the adult penguin. You're going to notice 
I shade or color in with my black colored pencil in some areas darker and some areas lighter. The eye is dark, so I don't want to make it uh, the same shade because if I do, we know from learning about value, my shape would disappear. So that means the eye would disappear. So here's where I might add some of the purple, which is a dark color, but it's not as dark as the black. And I want the wing to look like it's in front of the penguin. So I'm gonna add some purple in there and maybe mix uh, the black into that. Now I'm ready to add more color to my emperor penguin. Now for the baby penguin, I'm gonna add some black and white and maybe a little bit of purple. Now I'm ready to watercolor my background. You have two options for this. If you really wanna create a wintry sky, you can take a white oil pastel or you can use a white crayon and you can um, create some snowflakes in the sky. So I'm gonna do that on this side and then the other option is um, sprinkling some salt on this side. So that will kind of create a crystallized uh, winter sky. So it would kind of glisten a little bit. So in order to do that, the first thing you need to do is get your brush really wet and then you want to get the area where you're going to sprinkle the salt wet. And then sprinkle some salt into the area. You don't need that much. And then I'm going to get that wet again. And now I'm going to start to add my color. The color is up to you. I'm going to use uh, a blue color to kind of go with the cool color theme of the winter sky. So now when I do it over the snowflakes, you can start to really see those snowflakes stand out to create that snowing winter effect. When you paint, you're not going to get a resist painting over the colored pencil areas. So I, I like to be a little bit more careful when I'm painting around the penguins. So that is our lesson on creating emperor penguins, an adult penguin, and a baby penguin. I hope you enjoyed the lesson and always remember when you are creating art to relax, have lots of fun, and keep creating.